Um, so moving on, you mentioned about the money that you were raising, you have already oh. raised for Gaza. Was that the um, 16, was that the flash appeal? That you... The first one, 60. Ah, oh, that's just different. Okay, 60 million, yeah. yeah. And the second one is uh, adding 55, so it's now 155. Ah, uh, okay. And so those funds will be going to bring in more supplies and yes. generally to help people within those yes, communities. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you go to the website, uh, mm -hmm. there's a copy of the flash up here, and you can see the budgetary breakdown. Okay. Of the 115, yeah. It's basically largely for the support of shelters, including food and non-food non items. Okay. Um, now, yeah. I've got one question from Humanitarian Manifesto um, asking how the Arab world is um, losing out on reaching the Millennium Development Goals of improving maternal and child care due to the conflict. There's a very wealthy Arab world and the least wealthy Arab world, so depending on this. Uh, in, I think in the middle-income countries of Arab world, which is, uh, you may consider majority, mm. I think the uh, mother and child care progress is reasonably good, like Palestine, Jordan, uh, Lebanon, Syria. They, they, they are on the good track. <clears throat> but there's some... Uh, a uh, poor Arab world, a uh, low-income Arab world, uh, that is a major problem, and particularly in the conflict. And unfortunately, say even now, for example, <coughs> even in Palestine, we, we did an infant mortality survey last year, we are still analyzing the data in Gaza, it was before the war, and then we are analyzing West Bank, Lebanon, sorry, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan. The, where the mother dies during the course of delivery are hospitals. Because uh, they, or how to save the dying mother during the course of delivery is primarily send them to the good hospital. Then mm. uh, we can save the life. Yeah, that affects in the conflict. That affects in the conflict because access uh, access to human health is a fundamental human rights, but access is restricted because of the conflict. Or in case of Gaza and the West Bank is blockade and the checkpoint the cease. Then that uh, unfortunately that the mother could not reach to the services that the, she, she needs. And then that is one major reason that the conflict affects the mother and child pro health progress, affect to the higher level of care. Of course, you know, on top of it, we have the direct impact of the war, but nevertheless, that is a health side is very important in the conflict area, how to make sure the access. Yeah, so it's back to access all the time, and that's obviously getting more and more difficult. Now, um, I've got I've got a comment here. I've got two comments actually. One from a woman called Chelsea Ray in the UK, and this is from social media, and she has asked, "How is UNRWA coordinating on the ground with other agencies on a daily basis?" And uh, she, yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then she oh, just please. added about, I understand access to Gaza has been tightened since last year, and how has this impacted lives? Yes, and then the, about the coordination, there is, a, there is a regular coordination on ground, because we are not the only one. There's a many other UN agencies. For health, which I know the best, there's a WHO, they have their team, UNICEF is there, and all the others. And the food wise, we have World Health, World Food Program. So they are making daily coordination mm -hmm. and then uh, to make the best. And also, uh, Minister of Health for Health, there is a, for example, the last uh, Thursday, there is a coordination meeting for the primary health care part of the, under the conflict. Uh, okay. Um, and then what they agree is that we have to make a good surveillance system. Because, to, like what I mentioned, we are very much concerned that the primary health care level is outbreak of any infectious illnesses. So that the surveillance is very important to make sure we detect early and respond early. That kind of coordination is there. Mm -hmm. And then we also had a teleconference yesterday with the World Health Organization how to address the health issues, health crisis. So, and also Minister of Health is, has an operating room. And then we, for example, a good example of coordination, like what I said, is to, to uh, send or send a specialist from the rest of the world to Gaza, which is coordinated by them. So there are good coordination on the ground. Because people are working on the, at the maximum level, so they really need to work all the other together. Mm -hmm. The access to Gaza has been a problem. It's, it has been a problem. And now it's a major problem in the Rafa side, which is the Egyptian side. It's basically blocked. For example, that the, the plane I'm going to receive today in the Amman from Dubai, 
Yeah. Of Bahrain to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they firstly tried to go through Egypt. Oh. It was rough. But it's easier. Yeah? Mm. If you send it to Elish or send it to a truck, it's much easier, right? Yeah. You don't need to go across all the way down. So, but you, this, mm. it, so how do you happen. go from Jordan? You go from through the L&B crossing and, exactly, and have to exactly. go right round. Yeah. Oh, it's much longer. Mm. Yeah, but then nowadays, uh, anyway, that the goods we receive are going smoothly. And then, to be honest, Israel is somehow uh, uh, co- collaborating with us for go through the med- uh, items. So uh, the one we received yesterday, we already got the permission to go, uh, going through. So for tomorrow or the day after, we can send it to Gaza. But nevertheless, the easiest one is uh, Rafa. But uh, the, the, this is closed. And so that the doctors who really want to help with Gaza have to come from Israel to Eris. So it's a, it's a much more complicated business. So that is the main issue of the access. And then that we are asking Egyptian government to give more humanitarian corridors through the RAF. And I really hope it would happen because they still need lots of lots of support. And the other issue is that the people inside Gaza do not have access to go outside. Say like more compli- for health-wise, more tertiary care, more highly advanced care, which they need to save their lives, are not always, if not quite regularly available. And that is also the access to health is a major problem, particularly under conflict time now. Mm. Okay. Now I've got one other comment that has just come um, from somebody called Samara in Saudi Arabia. Oh. And they, they, the question is, I do not have question, but a few words of respect. I've been following the work of UNRWA for three years now through Dr. Sita. He travels back and forth to check on UNRWA team in Palestine and advocates for the refugees' health needs and crisis at major World Health Organization meetings. He is an incredibly humble human being. I don't think anybody else was born for this work other than Dr. Sita. What he and the UNRWA team does on a daily basis in Palestine is inspiring. There you are. So people are busy following what you do. (laughs) So she was just too kind. And the people, UNRWA stuff are extremely good. They are, say like even now, last Thursday, still 60% of the health staff came to health centers and working under this situation. Still 60%. uh, It's very high. Mm. Amazing, amazing. And is this from all over, are they from all over the world, the US and the UK and France? no, our staff are basically Palestinian refugees. Oh, I said we Palestine. have 30,000 Palestinian uh, staff of UNRWA, right? Almost all of them are Palestinian refugees. Oh, really? And I think that's uh, yeah, almost all of them. We have international staff like me, it's only 200 or max to 300. Mm-hmm. Uh, so almost 99% are Palestinian refugees. And oh, the point, wow. that's a one big reason they are so committed. I have never seen such a committed public servants in my life, in health. i never seen this. And even when they're not being paid, are they being paid? Oh, in, in UNRWA we are paid. In UNRWA, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. But, the, so. but also the Palestinian Minister of Health, they are not paid. Yeah. Uh, the worst one, the last four months, is they haven't paid in Gaza. And then that is totally amazing, the commitment, amazing. Yeah. yeah it's really amazing, yeah. And, you know, I, I call them every day. And then and the first thing they told me, oh, last night was bad. And every day last night was bad. And then the last, the previous days. But then what they're talking about, how to maintain shelters, how to distribute medicines, why that they couldn't sleep last night because of a shelling nearby houses. You know, it's, it's totally amazing. It's really fantastic people. Mm. And mm. are there any other messages that you would like to to get out yeah, to the uh, rest of the world about what, what's happening in Gaza and your role, and your organization's yeah. role? Yeah. Uh, what's happening in Gaza is uh, extremely sad and a total disaster, and I really would like the international community to raise voice to stop the war. And then, that the cause of peace is health, is a, health, which is in my area, is the outcome of everything other than health. And then, that the healthy life comes after the you know, entire healthy society, mm. and the, which is totally lacking. So, what we are doing is uh, to me, that's to some extent, scratching the face. So, even before the war, well, I went to Ghana and asked the community that what is your health problem? And they, they said, okay, because I came, they said family health team is good or this kind of thing they gave to me. But when I asked them, what is your real problem? 
Of course, no job, no electricity, no water. You know, we, if we don't have this, whatever we do, we cannot reach the healthy society. And that is totally lacking. So what I want to say is that I would really would like the international community to raise their voice to stop the war so that there are no more unnecessary casualties. But at the same time, I really would like the international community to make sure that we reach the real, real end of the war. Say, so, you know, let me, to be honest, if we stop now, like as it is, and the blockage it seems to be continuous, and the situation remains quiet, but the uh, same like before, I'm sorry that two, three years later, we may have the same situation. And that did, I'm not exaggerating. This is everybody's concern. If we simply somehow, you know, cosmetic, uh, bring a cosmetic end of the war, which is very important to save the lives. But eventually it could result in the, another war in the two, three years later. So we really need a very true peace and just a long solution for the Palestine, because otherwise it's extremely bad. It's going to be and bad. Then, yeah, yeah. And that's what I really want to say. For UNRWA, that, you know, UNRWA is a big organization, and it's a, it's a typical UN, United Nations. So we have some efficiency, we have inefficiency, we have a, a flexness, but we have bureaucracy, and that, that remains. And then that I, I've been working in the WHO and here almost uh, close to 20 years, so I, I know how the UN works. But what I want to say is I have never seen such committed local stuff in my life in the UN. And so I really would like to tell people that uh, continue to help us. Oh, well, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Sita.